The Hegoland is Germany's top dreadnought in Update 2.1, New Power. It's a strong ship with a highly effective turtleback armor scheme and a hexagonal turret layout. So, how does it fare in War Thunder? First, some history on the SMS Hegoland. It was the lead ship of the Hegoland class dreadnought battleships, which was the successor to the Nassau class dreadnought battleships. It was laid down in 1908 and commissioned in 1911. SMS Hegoland was involved in the Battle of the Gulf of Riga, the Battle of Jutland, and the Wilhelmshaven Mutiny. SMS Hegoland was scrapped in 1921 by the British. In War Thunder, the Hegoland has 12 305mm, 50 caliber SKL-50 guns split into six turrets, and can get eight cannons onto a single target at once. These cannons have a fire rate of three shells per minute, which is about 50% faster than most of the dreadnoughts in War Thunder. Their dispersion is also the same as the other dreadnoughts. Being faster to fire than the cannons of other dreadnoughts gives the SKL-50 cannon a major advantage in damage output, and makes it easier to zero in on enemy ammo racks or respond to new targets. For ammunition, the SKL-50 gets a choice of two shell types, high explosive with a base fuse and armor piercing capped. The HE base fuse shells don't have much explosive filler, but the base fuse does help make up for that by penetrating slightly further into soft targets before detonating. The APC shell is pretty good overall compared to that of other dreadnoughts, having a good mix of filler and penetration. Generally, I would recommend using the APC shell against most cruisers and other dreadnoughts, using the higher fire rate of the main guns to hit enemy ammunition as quickly as possible. Against destroyers and cruisers with low armor, the HE base fuse shells provide better overall damage output and can quickly chunk down their crew. For secondaries, the Hegoland has 14 152mm cannons and 14 88mm cannons. The 152mm cannons can fire up to 14 shells per minute, but have particularly weak shells for their caliber. Neither the HE nor SAP are particularly impressive, though generally the HE shells are a much better choice since the secondaries are best used for dealing with small, lightly armored vessels. The 88mm cannons have an excellent fire rate of 30 shells per minute, and can help with destroyers or PT boats that try to come in close for a torpedo strike. Both of these cannon types are under the secondary weapon group, so they can be controlled together to deal with close, soft targets. The last weapon system that Hegoland has is its torpedo tubes, having 10 of them. One on the bow, one on the stern, and four on each side of the ship. The rear side torpedo tubes have three additional torpedoes each for reloads, bringing the total of carried torpedoes up to 16. These torpedoes have pretty poor stats, having better explosive filler than the torpedoes of other dreadnoughts, but otherwise being similarly weak. They're best used for taking out other dreadnoughts at close range, but can't be used effectively at longer ranges due to their poor stats. Survivability is where the Hagoland excels most. The main belt is pretty thick, ranging from 300 to 170 millimeters, and has good coverage. It has a 35 millimeter layer of turtle back armor beneath the belt, along with another 30 millimeter layer beneath that, providing excellent protection against most shells. Coal bunkers line the ship's entire midsection between the belt and the turtle back layer, absorbing most of the damage from penetrations. Most of the ammunition is placed under the turtle back armor and the coal bunkers. Overall, this makes the Hegoland incredibly difficult to take down with shell fire, especially from close range. At longer ranges, plunging fire can penetrate by hitting the thinner armored deck, but even then, the Hegoland has a thicker deck than the other dreadnoughts. And as for the Hegoland's stats comes its mobility, which is completely average for a dreadnought at 39 km per hour. As with the other dreadnoughts, this is annoying, but it's expected. For the Hegoland's playstyle, it's best at tanking enemy cannon fire for extended periods of time while it uses its high fire rate to output consistent damage. Destroyers and most cruisers struggle to meaningfully damage the Hegoland, and even dreadnoughts struggle to do much to it at close range. To best use the Hegoland, head straight into close combat and force enemies into fights where they're unable to effectively penetrate your armor. Then, use the powerful armor-piercing ammunition on the main guns to cripple ships and destroy their ammunition. If you can get enemies on both sides of the ship, you can fire all the guns on one side at one target, then turn to the other side and fire the remaining guns at the other target while the first set of guns reloads, maximizing the ship's overall damage output. Torpedoes are the largest threat to the Hegoland, especially since it does best at close range. Occasionally make large turns while reloading to throw off incoming torpedoes, and don't get into such close range that you're unable to dodge torpedoes that have just been fired. The Hagoland lacks effective anti-air weapons, so against aircraft, there's not much you can do other than hoping that the enemy lacks munitions large enough to do much to the ship. 
I would recommend unlocking modifications in this order. Toolset, Fire Protection System, 305mm PSGR L3.4, Breader Replacement, Shrapnel Protection, Ventilation, Propeller Replacement, Ammo Wetting, and Engine Maintenance. The most important crew skills are Leadership, Main Caliber Reload Speed, Crew Interchangeability, Fire Prevention, and Ship Control. Thank you for watching. I'll be reviewing the West Fallen soon, as it seems like an appropriate follow-up to the Hegoland. Though, something a bit more colossal is coming first. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more naval content.